Hello, folks. It's Jeremy Osterberger with Bic Magazine. Today, I'm joined by Chad Jennings, who's been recently named plant manager of the Golden Triangle Polymers Company. So, Chad, we thank you so much for being here, man. Thanks for thanks for jumping on. Glad to be here today. Thank you for the invite. So, Chad, you got a, a new world scale integrated polymers facility, and folks want to hear about the project. But before we jump into it, let's learn a little bit about you. Can you give us a little bit about your background? Yeah, I. Um have 25 years with Chevron Phillips Chemical, uh, chemical engineer by background, uh, worked for an engineering company for the first couple of years in Houston, Texas, and then joined Phillips in late 1997. I uh, have had a chance to work with them in multiple facilities, uh, 10 years in the Middle East on three different assignments between Saudi Arabia and Qatar, and uh, a brief stint in commercial in a technology role that was a pseudo business and technical role, and then plant three plant manager positions among the positions that I've held. Oh, that's, that's cool, Chad. Great. You know, you reside in Houston, Chad? And... I do, yes. I live in North Houston. Oh, fantastic, man. Well, again, thanks for jumping on with us. So, so Chad, let's get into it, man. The Golden Triangle Polymers Company is a joint venture between CP Chem and Qatar Energy. You know, they broke ground on this $8.5 billion integrated polymers facility in Orange, Texas in March. Uh, you know, Give us some detail on what the plant's going to produce and what are your expectations for output? Yeah, well, I'll start by saying I'm very excited to have the opportunity to lead this project as a plant manager, or lead the facility as we go through the project phase and then to start up. Uh, it's uh, the plant once operational will produce polyethylene. Uh, it'll be a high density polyethylene product that will primarily be exported. Uh, the facility will consist of an ethylene unit that is going to crack ethane as the feedstock. And then we'll have 2000 KTA polymer units that will produce the high density polyethylene. Uh, the ethylene unit is going to be a 2080 KTA unit and that's thousand tons per annum uh, per year, which uh, is a large world scale facility. Yeah, that's neat, Chad. Yeah, have you ever been a part of anything uh, like this in your career? No, this, this is the first time, and that's one of the reasons it's very exciting for me to have the opportunity. Um, I shared earlier about having previous plant manager roles, but those were all existing facilities. And so coming into a plant manager role with established practices and procedures is very different than the opportunity we have to develop basically the policies, procedures, the culture, hire the personnel that will support the plant and operate it once it's functional. Uh, just a very different opportunity, but a great opportunity. Yeah, no, thanks, Chad. So, so let's get kind of macro level. You know, how does this project fit into sort of the overall business goals of both CP Chem and, and Qatar? Well, you know, I look at uh, both companies and haven't had an opportunity to work within multiple joint ventures as well. Um, companies are looking for opportunities to basically build facilities and the products that the world needs and wants. And in both of these cases, um, polyethylene is a commodity product that is demand as middle class grows. So for the owners, it gives them an opportunity to find advantage feedstocks. Um, North America, Texas in particular, has advantage feedstocks that support growth. And this project um, basically takes advantage of that feedstock that's available here locally, allows us to produce uh, products that we can then utilize in the U.S. or export based on where the demand is. So I think for both the owners, it's a similar uh, overall business goal. Um, we do have a, a project as well that's being developed in the Middle East with Qatar that is very similar to this one, and it'll be a, an ethylene unit and two polyethylene units as well. So for both, um, the portfolio includes uh, the two different assets. Oh, very cool, yeah. So, Chad, I mentioned the break, groundbreaking was in March, you know, so uh, civil is currently underway. Is that where we stand? Yeah, that's correct. So the focus to date has been uh, civil for the facility. You know, 1,700 acres were purchased for this particular project, and they've been working on civil. We um, have been doing underground piping installations. I've started driving pilings, and some of the early um, foundations have been installed. Okay, great. And then from here, Chad, what we'll, we'll kind of will be the next phase? Well, as we look over the next 12 to 24 months, I think the key aspects to, to the project will be 
importing a lot of the large pieces of equipment. Uh, we're using modular components in this project as well as uh, the large pieces you would normally see imported for um, a big petrochemical facility. So the um, early works included the infrastructure to be able to bring those facilities or those large modules into the plant. And we will be uh, importing either through uh, waterways to roads and then transport it into the facility. So that's what I would tell you and the community is over the next 12 to 24 months, we would start seeing those activities. The next phases, oh, I was gonna say, the next phases include hiring as well. So as we plan to ramp up for our manpower, um, we're utilizing our basically local first, which gives us an opportunity to make sure we uh, have opportunities for the community uh, to be employed and for vendors to support the construction activities. So that, that will uh, be ongoing. The plan right now is we'll peak at about 4,500 contractors and that will be in late 24 through mid 25. So it's quite a ramp up to get to that point. And that's, that comes with being in a new Greenfield facility is everything is starting from scratch. Yeah, wow, that's impressive. Some pretty big numbers in there, Chad. So, so Chad, uh, tell us about operational startup then, You're looking at uh, what, late 2025 or 2026? When, when, when is that expectation? Yeah, for polyethylene production, we would be looking at 2026. Um, the plant will come on in phases as um, the ethylene unit will take the longest time to construct. Uh, so the, the plan and intent is the polyethylene units would finish prior to the ethylene units. And that's pretty typical in industry to so have their derivatives available first. And then those will be proven out. And then once the ethylene unit comes online, we would be ready for full scale commercial operation. Yeah, really cool. And I wanted to cover um, for our audience some of the EPC and primary contractor companies on the project, Chad. So uh, I'll do my best here. But for folks listening, yeah, Zachary Industrial and DL USA uh, have a joint venture. The uh, furnace portion of the ethane cracker and engineering and procurement is executed by Technip Stone and Webster Process Technology. That's that's where you work, correct, Chad? You worked there prior in your career. Yes, I did. That's where I started post college. Ah, oh, cool. All right, man. <laughs> First job out. I like it. Yeah, awesome, man. Good. And then uh, PCL Industrial Construction is going to provide some uh, some of the construction work. We've got uh, EPC uh, partners doing additional portions of the cracker, including um, uh, JGC America and Kiwit Energy Group, as I understand it. And then uh, also Burns and McDonald Engineering Company and, and Zachary are executing some of the utilities and infrastructure scope. Um, uh, your main automation contractor is Emerson, and then WT Byler is responsible for the heavy civil. Correct. All right, excellent. Well, Chad, let me ask you this. You know, I wanted a comment from you on how this project is targeting, you know, lowering GHG emissions and, you know, maybe compared to other facilities here in Europe, uh, excuse me, here in the US or in Europe. Uh, I'd love to talk a little bit about um, uh, what this project means in, in relationship to um, hitting uh, emissions goals and, and, and targeting those those 2035 and 2050 goals we're all talking about. Okay, yeah, glad to speak on that. And yeah, the project, um, it, it is uh, scoped such that it would have the 25% reduction that you spoke of. Um, part of that comes from the feedstock that we choose to crack. So ethane relative to heavier feedstocks, liquids and naphthas uh, has a lower greenhouse gas footprint. Uh, for production. Other parts of that is lower energy consumption and production, um, lower energy usage uh, with the plant. And so that comes through technology advancements. And that was very important as the project was progressed to make sure we designed as much energy efficiency into the plant as possible. Um, that comes through various uh, technologies through either advanced refrigeration systems or recycle streams, uh, use of our own uh, recycled fuel gas as an example. And then the opportunity to either purchase uh, renewable energy, whether that be electricity or other renewables. So it, it's a collective um, group of efforts to reduce the greenhouse gases on this project. And like, like you mentioned, this plays into CP Chem's portfolio of reduction. Uh, we have our targets as a company um, that We'll also take it, uh, take advantage of those opportunities in this project. Yeah, no, th thanks, Chad. It's important to mention. Appreciate that. 
So, so Chad, you know, all these projects, you know, it's about this, you know, kind of local community first, right? You mentioned that um, through some of your uh, uh, comments on hiring. Uh, you know, what does this project mean for a local community there in Orange? And, and, and what does it mean kind of short term and then also long term? Yeah, um, I think short term, you know, it was great to have a chance to visit. So I shared with you, I've been back in country for just a little over a month and first three weeks, uh, you know, visit the facility area every week, but I had a chance to visit with some of the neighbors. We had stakeholder meetings. Uh, we opened our information office there in Orange uh, last week. And I think talking to the community is what I enjoy seeing is the excitement. Um, it has been quite a while since there's been significant investment in the orange community. And what I sense and even heard a comment like this is, you know, their grandparents got to witness some um, expansion during their time frame, And this is an opportunity for those who are living there today to see a significant expansion in the area. And they see it as jobs for their family members, jobs for them. And it allows people uh, who want to stay in the orange or golden triangle region to have good paying jobs and stay there versus looking outside of the region. So I think that's the short term piece. And with the amount of contractor positions and full time run and maintain positions, there will be a lot of opportunity. And I think long term, when you just look at what an investment of this type, a new facility like this, the primary uh, benefit plus the secondary benefits that come from additional industry, additional jobs, I think it's estimated that um, over the next 20 years, like a $50 billion uh, positive impact to the, the region. Yeah, well, Chad, no, that's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, Chad, no, that makes total sense, and I appreciate you comment on that. Uh, Chad, you know, we want you to come back on, definitely uh, give us maybe a milestone update as uh, this project progresses. Feel free to know that you're always welcome to jump on with us and uh, update us as you see fit, and we'll, we'll certainly uh, have you on if that's amenable to you. So thank you, man, for jumping on today. Is there any other comments you want to share at this time? Um, no, I think that's it. I just, I will just tell you, it's just such an exciting project. Um, truly within, you know, my, my career, the opportunity to do this, I think the others are going to have similar feelings when they have the chance to join the grassroots facility, develop the culture, be part of something that will be here for decades, you know, and, and leave a positive footprint for the community. It's just such an exciting opportunity. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, thanks, Chad. We know, um, you got a lot going on. I appreciate you making some time for Big Magazine. Again, we look forward to following the project as it moves along. And again, you're welcome anytime to come on and uh, give us an update. And hey, look, we got scissors and a camera. So be sure to invite us to the ribbon cutting down the road. OK, thank you so much. <laughs> and for anyone who wants to know more about the Golden Triangle Polymers Project, visit goldentrianglepolymers.com. As always, we thank you for watching and listening. And if you want more videos, project announcements, industry news, and podcasts, visit BicMagazine.com. Hey, remember, everybody, it's what we do together that counts.